Welcome to the first episode of the second season of Let's Play Hull City in Football Manager 2018. And uh, we are starting the second season by taking a look at how the first one ended. Because last episode we played the second to last game and we won the league. But there was one game left to play. And this is how it finally ended. And you might remember I was talking about us beating a point record. Unfortunately, we failed. Uh, Hull's previous point record was 90 points. And in the last game, we were winning it. And then uh, at the end, like, we were, like very little time left, they managed to equalize. So instead of getting three points, which would have brought us up to, to 91, and we would have broken the record, we got one point and uh, didn't manage to beat the record. But I mean, who am I to complain? We won the league. That was better than I had expected. And uh, joining us was Sunderland. Uh, Norwich, uh, the Sunderland managed to pass Norwich at the end. Look at this, only one point uh, different. Yeah, Norwich was doing so well. We were leading for a long time, second place for a long time. And then in the last round, they got knocked down to play of positions. And in the end, they didn't manage to get promoted this must be so frustrating for them instead the team they were in the very last play of position the sixth place in the league Aston Villa they managed to get promoted so yeah it was a, some rough days there for Norwich but this means uh, other than us we have Sunderland and uh, Villa that have joined us in in the Premier League and uh, there were also some some awards and uh, the fans voted Bowen as player of the season and Rossi as uh, signing of uh, the season. But bigger awards, the league awards. Dicko won top goal scorer of the league, even though he was out for like three months or even more with, the, with his injury. Bowen got young player of the season. And I, myself, won a manager of the year. But um, yeah, that was last season. This is the second season. So let's focus... Uh, Folks about that, and um, as I told you uh, at the end of the first season, during this transfer window, I had a specific goal because we had eight players that were in your prone, and one of my aims was to get rid of as many of them as possible. It didn't matter if they were good or bad; we needed to reduce the amount of in your prone players because that would put us in some serious trouble, and. Uh, that was basically the main goal and thinking I was going to focus on, of course, uh, uh, three transfers, uh, players that had contracts that expired, players from the demoted team, the teams that got demoted from the Premiership, uh, and of course younger and older players from, and players from small leagues, because uh, I know that we, we weren't going to be rich and I knew that m many players wouldn't like to join us. Um, also talking about uh, wages, we were actually during last season in ninth place in the championships when it comes to wages. So there were eight teams that were spending more than us. And now this season, talking about uh, talking about the Premiership, there is actually um, well. Uh, first, let's talk about last season. Last season, uh, the lowest team that managed to survive. Uh, spent 56 million euros on, on wages. That's more than twice. It's almost like three times the amount we were spending last season. And if you take a look at how it looks right now for this season, you can tell that we are in some trouble. This one comes to wages. We are currently spending 32, almost 33 million. But, I mean, we got promoted. Sunland got promoted. They are also very low. And the rest of the teams, like we have Burnley at 54, West Brom at 65, Stoke 72, and then Villa they could promote a 72. So, yeah, I'm not sure if this is good or bad, but uh, it tells us that uh, it's not going to be easy. And let's see what, um, let's see here, where is there is the season preview. Um, so, here you can see what's to be expected and the media predicts us to be the very last team in the league and i kind of actually find that a little bit surprising considering that we won the championship 
we ended the league ahead of Sunderland, ahead of Villa. Shouldn't we be like be expected to be at least 18th place? But yeah, we know that we're in for a very, very tough ride. And uh, basically, uh, I see myself currently with a three years plan where this, the focus for this season will be to survive, to not get relegated. And looking at these odds, it's going to be very difficult. But still, the goal is to survive. And then for the second season, my next goal is going to be the top half, or at least the middle, but at least the top, like trying to get somewhere around here-ish, the middle of the table. And then for the third season, uh, and that's of course the fourth season because we already played one, but the third season from now, the dream is to be to start trying to fight for positions in Europe. But yeah, it's a lot of things that need to go right for, for that to happen. So uh, let's take a look at the transfers, what's going on here during the transfer window. And and um, actually was about to sign Palista, but yeah, he, 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 after I made an offer for him, he got a three month injury. So nope, it didn't happen. And um, yeah. So we loaned out quite a few players, a lot of youngsters. We sold Mason, and Mason was one of our best players, but he was also injured prone, so he had to go. And same with Rossi. I mean, we got Rossi for free, we sold him for five mil, and he was very, very injured prone. Uh, Evandro wasn't injured prone, uh, but he just felt that he's 31, going to turn 32 during this season, and he's not bad. I used to have like a lot of players, as you can see here, uh, that's all like at his level or maybe even better. So I just felt like we better sell him where we can get some money for him, also make room for some other players. And also Campbell, the striker, in your prone, uh, we sold him. So we got rid of some in your prone players. Now look at his signings. And I was actually very surprised because uh, the last time I did a low league save, uh, was in FM 17, but I only did the save from going from the lower leagues, starting lowest leagues and won promotion to the highest. I never played uh, a season of reaching the highest. And before that, it must have been in Football Manager 16, my last low league save. And my experience with low league saves is whenever you get promoted to the highest league, it becomes much easier to sign in players. You can get a lot of uh, free transfers, you can get a lot of decent players, but things is clearly become much harder since since uh, the last time I did that because I was struggling to sign players like even the free transfers I scouted so many free transfer players and of course I'm not talking about like the big superstars here uh, I'm talking about like the, the decent but not fantastic players and more or less nobody wanted to join me and the few who wanted to join me it was like okay I can join you if I get a money that like a wage uh, salary that will be like five times more than my current highest player, paid player. Uh, like, okay, I can, can join you if you get like 20% of your wage budget. So the only player we managed to brought in as a free transfer is actually Ben Arfa. And he's not world class, but we got him for free and he's going to be rotating with Bowen here. So we get, basically have two decent players to rotate in this position. And, I mean, you know his history, played in the Premiership for many seasons for Newcastle, and then I've done a few seasons in PSG. And of course, in real life, he was actually loaned out uh, to Hull back in the day. So, not a fantastic signing, but, uh, I mean, Bowen needs somebody to rotate with, and I think it's, uh, I mean, he's free. It's definitely a decent deal, even if I would have preferred to get some something even better. Uh, another three stuff is we uh, loaned Groik once again. Uh, we loaned him last season and we managed to loan him again. So, yeah, I think it's a, a good deal. He's good. He's definitely good. Then for the ones we actually paid money for. First of Costas, he was transfer listed. And I think I feel like this is a steal. We paid 8.4 mil. And he's definitely, definitely, I mean, he still has some potential. And he can improve, but 1.4 mil, I mean, it's already worth 7.2 mil. And he ASAP become like our strongest uh, central defender. And I was hoping for, for even better central defenders, but uh, I feel like it was a really good deal. And uh, he's only 23, so 
hopefully his uh, values, uh, well, not his values, but his attributes will will increase uh, some more. But yeah, we were trying to go for Palista, and Palista was willing to join us, but that uh, long injury just um, stopped everything. And next play we, we signed was uh, Calabria from AC Milan. 7 million with some class souls that they will get if he plays a lot of games for us. Uh, two of the places I really like felt we need to, to strengthen was our fullbacks. Uh, we needed to both a left and a right fullback. And I'm really happy with the signing with Calabria. He's only 21. According to his potential, he can increase, become even better. I think this was a really good signing, value for his buck. Uh, for the left side though, I was struggling to find somebody and in the end I ended up uh, signing uh, Lukaku, Jordan Lukaku. And he isn't as good as Calabria, but still he, he was uh, transfer listed, so we got him really cheap, 3.5 million. Not a fantastic player, but somebody to rotate with Kingsley in this position. And Kingsley is, uh, I believe, is a bit injury prone, yeah. So uh, he is one of the injury prone players still in our team, which made it feel like even more important to, to get somebody to rotate with him. And then the last player was for the striker position. Uh, as you know, uh, Rossi left us, and also Dicko still have like a few months left of his injury, which uh, left us basically with, with only one striker, Hernandez. We know that we wanted a, a, another one. And uh, I was actually going for, uh, What's his name? Let's see here if he's still uh, available. Um, I was actually going for... Um, let's see here. Listed. Uh, Boney. I was going for Boney. Let's see if he's still here. Um, yeah, I was trying going for Wilfred Boney. I was thinking about him. And he's definitely pretty good. But then I realized I could get this guy for basically a, a fourth of the price. And they are kind of similar, not a huge difference between them at least. So uh, he was transfer listed and he's definitely not a world-class striker. But uh, yeah, I feel like we've got some quality for the money we spent. But yeah, there's been a lot of talking. I still have quite a, a bit of my, my transfer uh, money left because uh, it's been really hard trying to sign players as I told. Uh, so, uh, maybe we can do a better during the January transfer window when, and, and of course, um, the struggle has been like, nobody wants to join me. I had so many players that have been interested in that don't want to join me. Like, yeah, yeah I'm even struggling finding good, good loan deals. The only position where I can find players is like basically central midfielders. I found like a gazillion central midfielders, but for the players that we have needed the most, like for uh, defenders and strikers, there's basically nobody to, to loan or sign. So yeah, but today, the first game of the season, we're actually playing Aston Villa, the team that got promoted together with us. So this is one of the few games that we really need to take points. Really, really, really. And because uh, they are, without a doubt, one of the teams that we are going to be, be fighting against for our survival. And uh, yeah, we, we need to, to do well because normally when I, when I do my series, like the, the interesting games, the big games is when you play against the top teams in the league. This season will be completely different. We're not going to be watching like Man City and Chelsea and United... Uh, Tottenham, Liverpool games, not those games we're going to focus on. We are going to focus on games like Aston Villa and Sunderland and Stoke and so on. Like the teams in the, in the lower part of the league. That's what we're going for. Looking at statistics now, Villa has been creating some chances, uh, but we haven't seen any highlights. Uh, maybe it's time to change something around. We like a really, really boring first half. Focus just taking away. But yeah, first season fighting for survival and uh, it's going to be the team in the lower part of the table. The, these are the teams we are going to be watching games for. Um, of course, right now they're just uh, ordering in uh, 
in alphabetic order because most teams haven't played. But yeah, you get a you get a deal. And very boring first half. Got to tell the lads that I'm not happy. Uh, but I'm not sure if I want to change anything around because let's let's try to say, take control. See what happens. But yeah, like we are okay with a draw here because this is uh, this is one of the teams. As I said, we are probably going to be competing for uh, not getting relegated with. And uh, if you can take points from them away, it's okay. A win would be perfect. Would be beautiful. But uh, as long as we are not losing, because that could be very costly. And it looks like we are creating chances now. More chances than in the first half. Uh, maybe we can create something here. Marshall with a goal kick. Costas. Let's see what happens there. Uh, intercepted. Oh, they have Joybjörn. Uh, did Oh my god. Um, actually, I want to... to let, let's quickly... Take a look at their transfer history. So they actually signed Hoiberg. How the heck could they do that? He definitely didn't have any interest in joining me. Look look at the money they spent. I'm getting a bit jealous here, but yeah. It doesn't matter. It's about taking three points. It's not about spending money. And we have a lot of talented youngsters uh, that... Um, Hopefully a few of them, maybe not this season, but next season perhaps, could start really breaking into a first team squad. Um, I think I'm going to try to, let's try to go counter-attacking now. because It looks like they have the possession, even if it's only with a small margin. And of course hit Hoiberg with a, with a free kick. Focus guys. Focus. I'm nervous. Come on, guys, win it, win it, win it, win it, pretty please. I'm just stop, stopping, stop breathing. I'm just staring at the screen. I feel like for, for the last part of the game, if we can survive this corner, they're going to change a little bit more attacking formation. And of course, we, we are not. It's another highlight ASAP. But maybe, maybe our counter attacking policy could pay off. Maybe we can win this one. And uh, turn it around. Focus, guys. Oh, that was a rough challenge, but uh, missed it and still in Villa possession. It's Hoiberg. Come on, guys. Win it. Show a counter attack. Show us that we are counter attacking. And that's the lead. Carrillo. And uh, yeah. So I was about to change my formation. Play a little bit more attacking side here for the last part. And then, of course, before I get a chance to do that, Villa has taken the lead. And yeah, this is not great. Not great at all. We're going to go more attacking here ASAP. Let's go to the tactic screen. And let's think here. We have quite, some, quite a few players that are getting really garbage um, results. I'm going to put uh, Stewart up here. Of course, he's not going to play in this position. We're going to bring in Hernandez. Go with uh, two strikers. Like that. And uh, other than that, thinking, thinking, thinking. What would be a good option? Anybody want to uh, place? Um, and we are going to go attacking. And uh, we could go back to, to play mixed. Let's see what happens here for a few minutes. We are creating anything. Oh, is just taking away. Nothing at all is happening. Uh, actually, we are creating a few chances, but that's not good enough. So let's go even further into the attacking side. We could, we could actually... Let's think here. We could actually go uh, three defenders. We could go like this. Bring in you here. Like that. And uh, you up here. Like this. 
now we are definitely all out attacking as much as we possibly can and of course there's 10 minutes left to play we're gonna bump it into the box we're gonna go route one and we are overloading 10 minutes and yeah 10 minutes come on guys pretty please it is a goal kick for villa intercepted is grosishki grosishki a lot of players attacking here and look at here's Hernandez! Oh my god, it could have been a real super sub. He just came on and he got that chance. And it would have been beautiful, but it wasn't. It's Ben Arfa. Ben Arfa, can he create something? Can he get into the box? Yes, he can, but it's no trouble at all for the Aston Villa goalkeeper. And the clock is ticking away from us. Look at this, we are creating chances. Come on, it's calling with another, another goal kick. Intercepted, Grosishki, and he tries to set up, and here is Hernandez, here is Hernandez, and look at that, oh my god, we are, went the first, uh, first we need to see it is actually a goal, like nothing, yeah, the ref is not blowing a whistle or anything, actually, let's do it like this, I'm going to say, I'm going to attack for the last two minutes here, we are not going to, we are not going to do uh, Jose Mourinho and park the bus, we are going to stay with overloading, we are here for three points, we are Hull, and we are in it to win it. And it's ticking. Oh my god, I'm so nervous. This is probably really stupid, not uh, changing to a more defensive formation. But the dream, the dream, Bowen with a throw in. Henriksen. Henriksen was loaned out last season. A Bowen with a cross. Grosishki, Grosishki. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. But yeah, Hendrickson was loaned out last season. This season he is playing. Uh, Rodriguez with a throw in. Intercepted. Cross. Cleared. Ben Arfa wins the header. Still in Villa possession. The ref should probably load the whistle at any second. Oh my god. But that's a full time whistle. Okay, guys. Uh, we didn't get three points. But we got a very exciting start of the season. And look at this. <clears throat> Uh, don't mind that these teams haven't played anything. Just let's, let's just focus that we are currently in sixth place in the Premiership. Yeah, we are fighting for those spots in Europe. We definitely are. But yeah, this has been a very long episode. But it's the first episode of the second season. And I'm having a lot of fun here. So yeah, thank you so much for sharing your time with me. And I'll see you in the next episode.